What's going on, everyone? It's the Niskel. Welcome back to New Super Mario Bros. 2. I need a life. I only have 250. I need more. And you know what? I don't think we've reached a level where I can get infinite one-ups yet. No, I think that shows up in in a different stage. Or maybe I, ha I need to go back and actually like test out some of the stages, because there are infinite one-up stages. Or ones that you can trick the game into getting infinite one-ups. They do exist in here. I'll definitely have to show those off, but I'm getting better at this minigame. By the way, this is a post-commentary episode. Hope you don't mind. This means we can just sit back, relax, and take the cannon, because I already know where it's going. It's taking me to World Flower. Let's see how bad this stage is, because apparently I can't do cannon stages to save Mario's life. Okay, this is pretty straightforward. You got Wigglers! Are they so happy right now because I'm not jumping on their face? Oh, accidentally caught that one in the butt. And now he's mad. Don't jump on a Wiggler's butt, dude. They hate that. You know, the raccoon tail kind of breaks this entire cannon stage. Jeez. Oh my god, it's World Flower! How did I know? See, I can do that now that I'm not holding a 3DS. I can just do weird things with my face, even though you can't see them. There's a reason I don't do webcam LPs, because now you have to use your imagination on what I'm doing right now. Okay, there's that. Let's do this stage first, because this stage rocks. This is actually a legit, amazing stage. Because you get to choose your difficulty. And it's all based around the mini mushroom and running on the water. Seriously, as soon as I saw what this stage was doing, I immediately fell in love. So, there's your options. Hard mode, easy baby mode. We're not going to be in easy baby mode today. We're going to be super hardcore mode. And I also love that they give you a little coin box so you can be a, a little mini blockhead. And this is your stage. Tons of cheap cheeps, which means you can't stop running, otherwise you go into the water and you fall into a cheap cheap. There are sharp spike blocks all over the place. And coin trails telling you where to jump and where to land. This is an amazing stage, and so far I have missed two of the three star coins. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those stages where uh, it is automatic, and if you don't get the coins, you're replaying the entire stage. But the cool thing about this stage is it takes no time at all to finish. I think at the end of this recording, I did this stage about five different times? And that's mainly because it was me getting mini mushroom power-ups for later on. Um, I think it was also due to the fact that I wanted to see everything. Like, I, I kept missing small things because this is essentially a blind play, even though I've beaten this game 100% before. But, uh, it, it was good to see a stage like this again. See, these are the kinds of stages I love. I love challenging stages. It's just when you get to, like, unfair hard is when I start hating them. And even if the stages are kind of easy, I, I still don't mind them. I think this is why in my spare time I play Mario Maker 2 and just do random stages made by random people. Because some of them are ungodly unfair and or troll levels, or you get a nice, decently difficult stage. So this next run we're going to do is actually going to be uh, baby mode just so you can see the big differences. And it's a pretty good idea. The one thing that's uh, bad for completionist's sake is uh, if you're trying to 100% the game, baby mode is not for you. Baby mode is the version that has no star coins, which means in order to get 100%, you gotta get good, son. You gotta learn how to play this Mario game. You need to learn how to run on the water. No mercy! <laughs> This is Mario Boot Camp! We're gonna teach you how to make a fun Mario game whether you like it or not! I actually think that's how this game came to be. If I... There was an article I read uh, where the team that was making New Super Mario Bros. 2 basically went to Mario School. <laughs> I, I think that's a direct quote, Mario School, where they were taught how to work with the mechanics of Mario and make the games fun. Now that ac actually sounds like a brilliant idea because Nintendo's got Mario down to a science. 
where if you change one element in the formula, you'll either make or break the next Mario game. So, putting a bunch of new developers into Mario School and having them figure out the mechanics, it, they actually did pretty good. And actually, uh, their, um, I don't want to say tinkering, but them working on this game led to New Super Mario Brothers having local multiplayer. So, something good came out of it. And also, the level design in this game is some of the best, at least in my opinion. Because uh, this stage, 10 out of 10. That jet stream stage from uh, the last video, 10 out of 10. That was a really fun stage, even though it, it kind of pissed me off. <laughs> it's just one of those stages where you play through it and you're like, yeah, that was, that was pretty good. Yeah, bravo, bravo. You know, I don't think I'll ever be as... Oh my god. I don't think I'll ever be as good as uh, some of the other, like, bigger Mario Maker people. Because I don't have a lot of patience for bullshit levels. But, uh, when you have a well-constructed level, you, that feeling of satisfaction when you actually beat it based on your own skill is so satisfying. And, honestly, I think that's why I keep playing Mario games today, is that feeling of satisfaction. Beat that hard stage, and you're like, yeah, I did that. <laughs> I think one of my... One of the best experiences was back when I let's play the first new Super Mario Brothers, and uh, beating the World Eight stages. Those are some of the hardest stages in New Super Mario Brothers. They're no pushover. Man, they're hard. And then when you beat them and you get all the star coins, you're like, yeah, yeah, that was awesome. All right, so now we're going through the stage a third time, and this is where we're going to be getting the star coins. There's number one. And, uh, oh my god. And the next one is actually, this should look familiar because the, oh my god. Well, there it is up there. The stages should look very familiar. Or, the, uh, part A and part B. They look very familiar because they're essentially the same. One has more challenge than the other, and they're laid out the same. Which means that when you come in here in the hard section, go up here... And it's going to look identical to Easy Baby Mode, but there's a star coin up here. So they thought of that. And I'm glad they did. But then it leads to people like me just checking both paths. Like, did I miss anything? I need a 100% new Super Mario Brothers. And bingo. All three star coins. We're out of here. You know, now that I'm thinking about level design, you know, I'm just talking, because I, I don't know much about level design, I just play the games. I'm not, like, into the deep science of how to make a level. But you know, the Mario game that has some of the best design levels is actually Mario Odyssey? <laughs> because they're big, wide open, and they have something that I don't think a lot of games have much of anymore. And it's making the player feel smart. Now, there are many ways you could do that, but Mario Odyssey has this fascination with having all the thoughts in the world. And what I mean by that is, when I throw Cappy at something that looks so stupid, there's no way there's a moon on there, but what if they thought of that, and a moon is in there? That's like, oh my god, that's, that's freaking brilliant, I feel awesome because I thought of that. I mean, they thought of it first, but I thought to look there because they thought to put something there. I'm a genius. <laughs> I am genius, Mario player. I play game good. I'm amazing. By the way, this stage is probably one of the least headache-inducing ghost houses because it is fairly straightforward, and this is another example of good design. There's a lot of fake doors. A lot of real fake doors! all over the stage. And, uh, I love that they do that. I also love these, uh, little boo elevators. <laughs> Going down to hell! <laughs> it, it's a very good time. But I also like the fact that, uh, yeah, one of the good design choices was having a star coin hidden behind a boo. So if you accidentally see it, like, 
uh, out of the corner of your eye, you're just like, oh man, that's nuts. They actually thought to hide something there. But then you also have segments like this. This room. This room not only rewards you for checking all the doors, but the solution is in plain sight. So, here's a good example. We're actually gonna get this star coin, and starting from left to right, you're thinking, well, shoot, does this mean there are multiple exits that I have to look into? No. Because this is one of the rare ghost houses that I don't think has a secret exit. Because if you look on the map, it doesn't have a secret. So it's just like a normal ass ghost house. Oh no. Yeah, so here's an example of real fake doors! God, I love that line. But now we can check the rest of the doors, and, you know, being the super mega power gamer that I are, I was like, that I are. <laughs> That's how super power mega gamer I am. I can't form proper sentences, but goddamn it, I can play Mario. Here's another just a uh, bonus room. Oh, you suck. Yeah, see, there's the star coin. This, this uh, boo elevator is leading you all around the coins. Pick up the star coin, bam, you're done. You don't have to go t through a bunch of different hoops to get the star coins. You're just done, and it's great. Gives me all the brain juices I need and makes me feel great for figuring out a kid's game. <laughs> Speaking of which, I love the fact that the one episode where I said, does anybody else get the satisfaction of being, like, really good at a kid's game and thinking, like, yeah, suck it, kids. I can play this game better than you. Almost everybody said, uh, yeah, yeah I, I, I do kind of do that. Uh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> that was really funny. I know, we all need to feel superior every now and again. Like this, I actually felt pretty superior about this. Coming in with a Tanuki Leaf, just ready to open up this place, and... Oh my god, this is a secret exit. I'm so stupid. Don't listen to me. Even though I pre-recorded this, I still couldn't remember what this stage had. Nice! Actually, no, that'd be double. Nice! Nice! Oh, I just... made that a triple. Hold on, let me take back one of those. Yeah. There we go. It's a cool time. Here's the other exit. And I love that they actually give you a shortcut just in case you don't want to take the elevator. You can go back to where um, the hidden exit was and just continue upward. So in case you don't care about the money, you know, the uh, the thing this game is based off, you could just go up the side passage. And you know what? That's actually more brilliant game design. I just realized. If you go in there without a power-up, you're not screwed. If they didn't have that extra... Uh, uh, extra platforms, you would have been screwed. So, good game design. Good job, guys. You did it, B-Team. You made a Mario game that Nintendo can be proud of. So proud of that they don't even acknowledge it on Mario's 35th. I'm never gonna get over that. We did it! We've unlocked so many stages and we've played so much Mario today. Next time on New Super Mario Bros. 2, let's go ahead and finish up World 3. We don't have much left. See you guys next time.